everyone. First of all, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Secondly, this is not such a busy day for the kiddos outside. I feel like I'm twiddling my thumbs, but it's a perfect day to start preparing for the season. This is Ceramis. This is not an affiliated video at all, but I wanted to show you how I go about preparing my Ceramis ready for repotting and ready for the season and not have to do everything piling up on the day that I need it. Now, Ceramis has a reputation of being super, super dusty and it has probably turned a lot of people off using it because of all the dust. And you can see how it just sort of crumbles and deteriorates. That is the nature of Ceramis. Look at all the dust that is in here. Now, I want to show you how you can easily clean your Ceramis, get it ready to go without having to worry about the dust and then I'll show you what it looks like after having been recycled years and years and years and years later. So this is only right at the beginning of when you get your Ceramis in to get it cleaned up. This is not a characteristic of Ceramis of what it will do in your pots. And for that reason, we are now going into the kitchen. First step, get yourself a fine strainer. The most important thing with Ceramis is to prepare it in small batches. That's the only laborious thing about it. My bag is rather large. I have no intention of cleaning all of this today. Check that out. The bottom of the bag is gonna get worse as you go through the product, all right? But I'm not gonna do this all in one go. Now you can already see from the strainer how much has already gone through onto the sink. If I were to shake it, it looks even worse. And that is what a lot of people are turned off by when they see the bag. They think the product is not gonna do the job. Now, let's put the faucet on and see what happens. Let me move this aside. Can you see that dust draining away? Know that the more you get to the bottom of the bag, this is gonna get worse and worse. Do not be put off by it. It's absolutely fine. If you've been on my channel a long time, you will know that my tap water is of pathetic, dismal, gross quality, very high in parts per million. And I'm rinsing the ceramics with this water just because it is so, so dusty. I don't want to waste my RO water. What I am going to do though, is boil it in RO water because that is the next step after getting the first rinse of dust off. If you were to use higher quantities, trying to cut corners, saving yourself the time, it is possible that you are gonna clog up your drains. You don't want to do that. That is something that you can avoid but just going batch by batch by batch. If you were to have a media, for example, organic media with ceramics mixed in it, if you were to see those bags and you wanted to use them, don't worry about it either. Those granules will not make that much of a dusty difference in your pot. This is just if you were gonna use ceramics purely in the pots or mixed up with lecker. That is when you really, really need to get that dust off, the initial dust, and then let the water run clear. You don't want any of this in your pots. And let me tell you, this is not the last time you will be doing this. Ceramics you can recycle, and you will be doing this over and over again, every single time. So what I'm doing now is not just because of the first time of usage, but it's exactly the same for when you have a batch that's coming out of a pot and you want to recycle it and clean it. And you can see now after some goes, let me just massage a little bit my strainer and see if I can't tease out a little bit more dust. But you see my water is now running clear. It's not orange anymore. It kind of reminds me of when I used to shower after a safari in Kenya. <laughs> wash my hair and all that red dust would come out and you could see the shower just turning orange. <laughs> Love it. But yeah, water running clear. Now we're going to put it into a fancy, fancy pot. The best that you have, of course, 
No, just kidding. These pine granules, don't throw them away. They are also very, very useful. They will not clog up your pots, promise. You see? Somewhat clean, step one. Now we'll just add some beautiful fresh RO water. In my case, because of the high parts per million in my tap water, okay? So if you have good tap water, you don't need to use anything fancy like RO water or distilled water. The point is to boil it with the least amount of minerals in the water you're boiling it in. And you can see how there's still residue on the ceramics. That's normal, that is okay. The reason I'm saying to use super, super clean water is because the ceramics, due to the heat of boiling, will now expand. So if you have high parts per million in your water that you're gonna boil it with, all those pores as the ceramics expand will open up and let all the parts per million enter into the granules. And that is exactly what we want to avoid. We want it as clean as possible, and that includes any excess salts. There we go. If you already see some floaters coming out of that ceramics, take a strainer and start picking them off the top. Now, we have two options here. We can stand together and watch the pot boil or we can watch paint dry. I can provide either of the two. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> when it starts boiling, we'll be back. <laughs> Tina Turner, anyone? Steamy windows. That means our ceramics is boiling, so let's have a look. I have switched out my ceramics to tomato soup. Oh, it's smelling delicious in here. Just kidding. <laughs> ceramics on the boil. This is what you want. You want the granules to be bumping up against each other. Do you see how much more residue is coming off? The water was somewhat clear, a little bit cloudy when we got to the point of putting it on the stove. Somewhat clear, but now you can see the movement of the boil is jiggling the ceramics around it even more, making it release more of the dust. Now, sometimes ceramics can cause a scum on the surface. That scum is easily removed by taking the strainer and just going through and picking off the scum. Normally, that doesn't happen, but I've had some batches come and they were sort of like a frothy scum. Pretend you're cooking in a bouillon and you want to make it a clear, clear consomme and then suddenly you just, you know, you keep taking off the scum on the top ever so often. That's what you do with ceramics if you see bubbly, frothy scum on top. There is nothing wrong with the ceramics if that happens, but it can happen. But our ceramics is pretty, pretty clean, except for that dust that we want to get off. Now you want to keep this going for about 10 minutes. On a rolling boil, keep letting them bump up against each other. And then we'll go to the final stage of cleaning our ceramics. Next thing you want to do is prepare some clean water, put it on the boil. You want that water piping hot because we are going to be using hot water to strain our ceramics. So you want to be ready with super, super hot water. I do not get super, super hot water out of my faucet and I don't have clean water in my faucet. I cannot emphasize enough that the water that you're going to rinse your ceramics with has to be super clean and super hot. And while our water boils, we can switch off our boiling ceramics, ready to get it strained and rinsed. Mmm, yummy. Our water has boiled. We're ready to get this show on the road. See how much more dust is coming out? And off camera, I'll be cleaning out this pot and using this residue as well. But for time saving, ooh, check this out. Look at this. See how much more comes out when you boil it. It doesn't just serve its purpose for sterilizing. Now the hot water goes on top because of the open pores. So you want to drain this off with good clean water, but piping hot. Don't want to be putting cold water on these hot granules and reintroducing any salts you may have leached out. Ceramis is much, much cleaner than Lekka. I'm going to be doing this rinsing process two more times 
when I've boiled more RO water. But you see the point here. Do not use cold water while the ceramics is piping hot. Strain with piping hot clean water to keep it as clean as possible. And more and more of that dust is going to come out. Now, here's the thing. Once it's cooled off, you can use the ceramics immediately. You don't have to wait for it to dry. It's a bit sticky on the hands. It's a little bit more cumbersome to work with when it's wet. But if you needed to use it straight away, you can do that without any, any problems. There is no need to be leaching out any salts. It is a much, much cleaner media as opposed to some lacquer brands. This is how I go about cleaning my ceramics. I'm going to continue taking everything out of this pot. Boil myself two more kettles of fresh RO water, rinse out my ceramics, and then it's ready to go. With the exception of I don't have anything to repot right now, I can let it dry and store it in a container ready to go. But I'm getting ready for the season and that excites me on a gloomy day like this. Whoops, while I wait for more water to boil, I'm going to add this clip in. Here is ceramics that has been reused for the past four years on and off from one pot to the next. Sterilized exactly the same way as I've just shown you with a fresh batch, but you can see how bit by bit, even the dust over the years will just dissipate. There is no more residue in here at all. I love this stuff. The inorganic growing about it, being able to recycle, yeah, in my ceramics, there's seashells from a long time ago for the added calcium. I never pick that out. I just leave it in there. But isn't that cool? I just wanted to show you what it looks like after it's been recycled over and over again for reuse. I hope that it was helpful. If you have any questions about ceramics, I've been using it a lot in my collection in the past, so I have some videos in the playlists. But if you have any questions, I can easily answer in a comment. I will do so. If there is a question that warrants a video that is helpful to everybody else, I will do that as well. So let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, I thank you for your time. Thank you for spending some time with me in my kitchen. And I hope that you have yourself a beautiful day. On one condition, though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.